It's you with Julian on the brown note and not a particularly long review of Transformers Rise of the Beasts, the latest in the rebooted franchise after the uh, unexpected success of the Hayley Steinfeld starring Bumblebee, which was superb. The Transformers series under Michael Bay became synonymous with horrendous filmmaking, with huge budgets and the most mindlessness of Hollywood's big budget blockbuster movies. Um, he was almost like somebody that's, whose movies would be taught in film school in over the next hundred years. There's so much about them that's awful. Um, the nonsensical gibberish screenplays, absolutely appalling, uh, headache-inducing editing, relentless level of noise, um, the pursuit of visuals over absolutely anything to do with story, and they were, for the most part, with a slight give for the first one not being too bad. They were just shocking. Uh, just some of the worst films that have ever had that level of budget. And then Bumblebee came along. Hayley Steinfeld, who's absolutely wonderful. And it was a great film. And this says um, Rise of the Beasts has stupidly abandoned her, who was the greatest thing to happen to the franchise. So the Bumblebee film was set in the 80s and the sub the main films were all set sort of in the 2000s and this is in between. So this is a prequel. Um, there's not much in the way of the <coughs> story here. We get two characters. Um, Anthony Ramos as Noah Diaz. He's sort of like trying to look after his family, but he's a bit of a deadbeat ex-military, can't get a job, and ends up trying to steal a car to make some money. The car ends up being one of the Transformers. And Dominic uh, Fishback, who I think was in that um, Power Up movie, and she was good in that, and she's pretty decent here, but they don't use her very much. And she's a researcher, at a museum and she finds out that there's this warp portal she doesn't know what it is yet but basically there's this key that um, enables beings to uh, travel the universe at the start we see this very big planet site planet devouring transformer who's um, quite cool and they don't use him enough it comes across like dark side or thanos sort of vibe and he roams the universe eating planets. It's pretty cool. Um, and sending his uh, Transformer-sized minions to, you know, off to the Earth to try and get this key. And he will be able to go intergalactic and eat every other planet in the whole universe. What's really good about this is that half the film takes place in Cuzco and Machu Picchu and the surrounds in Peru, which is one of the grandest settings for a movie like this I've ever seen. You get to see the uh, Transformers fighting in actual Machu Picchu. And you get some beautiful um, high-definition shots of um, this this um, festival happening in Cusco. All of that elevates things massively. Look, this is nowhere near the bombastic dross of Michael Bay's later Transformer films at all. Um, it's, for the main part, fairly human in scope and fairly charming as well. Um, there's a huge voice cast, absolutely ridiculous voice cast. Uh, Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime, Ron Perlman, Peter Dinklage, Michelle Yeoh, Pete Davidson. Oh wow! So he's the I, one of them's like really annoying. Um, not too annoying, but one of them is just like a bit too uh, full of himself. And uh, I'm not surprised that that's Pete Davidson at all. So um, it's got a huge voice cast, not that I actually recognise anybody uh, at all. Um, I, I didn't mind it. I didn't. Mind, I thought it looked really good, actually. I think one of the things, like, no one can take away how incredible the visuals were in those Transformers movies that Michael Bay did. It's just that they were put together so horribly, it was hard to actually enjoy them because his editing is some of the worst that's ever happened in movies. So not having that relentless um, choppy editing give you a headache. Um, you're actually able to look at the film a lot more. And um, even though, you know, it's not a huge plot, it does have a more sort of grounded human element to it. 
And there's this sort of notion that the Transformers are going to give up their opportunity to ever go home in order to protect planet Earth, which is in leading up to the, the first of the Michael Bay films. So overall, it's visually gorgeous to look at. And there's some really nice action sequences in it as well. And quite good voice cast um, compared to something like Avatar. I thought it looked a lot better than Avatar. And the voice acting isn't flat. The dullest voice acting in history. It's actually got quite a vivid voice cast as well. And the two the two human uh, characters that sort of occupy the main stage are reasonably good. But why they didn't bring why they didn't shoehorn Haley Steinfeld into this? She would have elevated everything. I don't understand how they get someone so good and then just sideline her. Hopefully not for the future ones. But overall, um, pretty much better than any of the Michael Bay ones. So Transformers Rise of the Beasts, I'm going to give 6.5 out of 10.